What's good? What's good? We are back. Another episode of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. About to take you back into the world of bare knuckle. Uh, my next guest is originally born in Long Island, New York, and now fights out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, which isn't too far from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And he's a former Bantamweight champ and has over 30 pro fights on his resume and a 4 and one record in the BKSC. Let's bring him on, the one and only Keith, the rock star, Richardson. What's going on, Keith, brother? what's good, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, you ain't too far from me, man. I'm, a, I'm actually in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, yeah, I spent some time out that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you have, and that's why I want to start uh, your military background. So I want to start there. Um, you were in the Marines, combat vet. What was that experience like for you? Um, you know, I always like to use the uh, old um, uh, Oliver Twist line. You know, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. You know, I, you know, um, you know, I met some of the some of my best brothers that, like, you know, anybody could ever ask for when I was in the Marine Corps. Like, you know, I had some incredible experiences. Like, you know, experiences that few people will ever will ever have in their life. Um. Yeah, you know, but there were there were definitely some downsides. You know, lost a lot of friends. Um, Sorry to hear know, that. Uh, but it was, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't trade the experience for for anything. It's definitely made me who I am. It's the reason why I think I'm one of the most mentally tough individuals in combat sports. Um, you know, it was it it, it it's a life changing experience uh you know going to war leading marines in combat um yeah i love being marine uh and like it's one of the one of the things i'm most proud of in my life and you just had a little reunion um how was that man it's it's always great to see those crazy crazy dudes like you know <laughs> um yeah we we've, we've gotten like the re the reunions are always always a little bit of cra crazy whenever you get a bunch of Marines out all together, <laughs> uh, but they've definitely settled down like the last couple of years. Yeah, I remember uh, remember some of the Marine reunions um, when we were uh, when we were in our twenties and there was a lot of police intervention and d damage and destruction to ourselves and property. That's crazy. Um... So, did you get right into like mixed martial arts right when you got out of the Marines? Um, it was pretty shortly after that. Um, you know, at first, you know, I was having a lot of uh, PTSD issues and stuff like that. Um, and really, as soon as I found MMA and combat sports in general, like you know, because I had um, I was a state camp wrestler, and like you know, I passed up a wrestling scholarship to go to the Marine Corps. Um, you know, so once I started training, though, it immediately became my uh my therapy and like, you know, it was just, just, just completely changed everything. Calm, calm me down a little bit, you know, give me a positive, um, you know, positive, you know, just like a positive thing to do, um, instead of self-destructing. Now, what were some of the things that you learned in the Marines that you carried over to the MMA? Um, definitely the biggest mental toughness, um, you know, like, yeah, you know, I, I've had so many close calls with death. You know, I've had to like I've lost friends and then had to go on patrol the next day uh, doing Damn. the same thing that like you know we like we just lost them doing. Um, you know, like I know I can't be mentally broken because of that. Like you know, like you know that that's a big reason why like you know like why I was able to fight like only a week after i lost my father like you know yeah it's like and you know, you know and my dad told told me like you know you're still fighting like so it just uh, um like that's definitely the biggest thing um plus also just um attention to detail when it comes to certain things like you know like um like always being on on, on alert and like trying to break things down um you know making sure that you're watching everything that's going on, you know, um, you know, it definitely helps when you're trying to like break down fights, break down fighters and like, you know, kind of helps, uh, helps with, um, like, you know, just, um, fight IQ. Uh, and then just also, um, 
you know, just just the uh, just the ability to um, stay calm in in extreme situations, like you know, especially a bare knuckle fight. Like a bare knuckle fight is the closest thing to a gunfight that that I've that I've come across. Okay. Um. Now, for your MMA career, like, was there a fight that just stands out to you? Um. My MMA career, I'd probably um probably one of my uh like my um favorite fights was when I fought um Rodrigo Lima from uh, Bellator. Okay. Um, yeah, it was one of yeah it was it was uh kind of earlier on um like right in the middle of my, my MMA career. Um, and it was one, it was just one of the fights, like, cause he was, like, he was highly touted out of Bellator. Um, you know, he was still under contract with Bellator. Like, you know, it was a big fight. I, th- I think his record was like 12 and two or 12 and one at the time or something like, so like it was, uh, and like, and it, you know, it was one of those fights, like it was a good, like it was a good, a good fight, you know, back and forth a little bit. And then like, you know, in the end, like. You know, I definitely took over the fight. It was one of those uh, fights where it was just, you know, it cemented in my head and also a lot of people's heads. Like, you know, I had that next level talent, like that next level, that, that ability to compete at, you know, at that next level in the world, like, you know, like against world-class fighters. Now, what made you decide to get into the bare knuckle? Um, Yeah, it was kind of... Like I, I'd, I'd definitely been interested, you know, like you know, um, cause like that. Well, they had actually been interested in me like way, way before, like uh, like you, um, BKFC one or two, um, okay, they asked, me to, uh, asked me to be on the card, but I had an MMA fight. Uh, but when like first when I um when I was coaching Taylor for her first uh bare knuckle fight, um, like I you know I saw saw what they were doing and I like and I saw like just the just the way the fights were like, you know, definitely, uh, definitely got the adrenaline spiked. And like, you know, I was, I was like, all right, they, they're on to something like this is, this is really cool. Um, but really when I, what made me make the decision was I was just getting frustrated with MMA. You know, okay. I was on like a, you know, I was on a big win streak. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the, um, MMA promotion, like a lot of the top tier MMA promotions, um, you know, just weren't giving me the opportunity. I'd gotten signed by uh, P- the PFL, but then um, I was I got signed by, for the tournament. But then, uh, like the guy I was supposed to fight refused to fight me because uh, I was going to be a last minute replacement. And like now, yeah. um, and then yeah, you know, they did, they chose not to re-sign me the next season because I was you know signed outright. Like you know, they paid me to be an alternate, but. You know, I got money to step on a scale, but no, nah, I'd rather take a fight. Um, like, you know, UFC, like, you know, I think they thought I was too old at the time. Yeah. And it was just, uh, like, you know, it was just frustrating because, like, I had beaten Hunter Azure, and then, like, right after that, like, you know, I submitted him in the second round, and right after that, they turn around, and, and he's the number one pick on the Ultimate Fighter. So I just, you know, I was kind of frustrated. So, uh, like, you know, I figured – um yeah, I figured I'd give this bare knuckle thing a shot. You know, first time I did it, loved it. Yeah, you know, they've always, uh, you know, treated me fairly and like you know, been really uh, supportive of my career. So it was, uh, think it, think it, think it worked out well. Have you found the transition? It seemed like it was easy for you to go into bare knuckle. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it, it's cra- it's crazy because everybody, like, my whole MMA career, everybody always thought of me as a submission guy. You know, and then I then I mess around and win the bare knuckle boxing world title, um, but the transition was I, I think it's just because of um, like all all the coaching and stuff like that. I'm used to like you know I'm gonna say coach boxers, I coach MMA fighters, like um, and like just making all those mental switches, like in sparring and and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Like it makes it makes me very adaptable. Um, you know, like like yeah, that's part of like you know how i got became so good at uh switching stances and stuff like that like you know because i got to train a train somebody for a southpaw so standing southpaw for 
for the whole camp or something like that. Um, so just like, you know, my, I, my ring, I, you know, my, my fight IQ is I think next year. So it just made it, uh, made the transition pretty easily, easy for me. Now I hate to bring up the losses, man, but you, you know, you just had the match with Alberto Blas. Um, how have you been handling that? Um, you know, nothing, nothing's rougher than winning a world title, but like, like I said earlier, you know, I'm, I'm mentally strong, you know, um, and yeah, like this is one of the, one of the things that I've always like, you know, said about the uh, fight game, like, you know, it's, uh, it will humble you any chance, it, chance it gets. Um, and you can either stay humbled or you can get hungry. I'm hungry. Uh, you know, I definitely, uh, definitely want, want my title back. You know, that's um, good to hear. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things like, you know, like that's, that's that's the tough thing about this game you know there's nothing uh there's nothing worse than getting your taking an l you know in front of a packed stadium you know there's not nothing worse than losing a fight but you know it's uh it is what it is you know he's, he's like he's a tough talented kid um but okay. yeah he didn't stop me nobody can stop me that night <laughs> yeah that i wanted to ask you about that too like <laughs> So at the end of the match, I mean, you started, you definitely wasn't stopping. You was going at the ref. So did you clearly not know where you were at at the time or what was going on? Um, no, like, you know, like I, uh, like after the fight, I didn't know. I like, I didn't even know that happened. Um, okay. But like when you, like when you watch the video, like, you know, the ref kind of slid in there, like yeah, in, the yeah. middle, in the middle of an exchange. And then as soon as, as soon as I started coming at him, he made the mistake. Instead of grabbing me and holding me, he started backing up. Like okay. so, I didn't even notice. Like yeah. I, I didn't even really notice that he he had kind of like slid in there. Yeah. So and if if you start backing up, like you know the fighter, I me mean, he's like, oh, I got him on the ropes now. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I thought, you know, uh, but yeah, was I you know completely there? Hell no. Like <laughs> you know. I was, I was, you know, I take take taking a heavy shot to the temple, like you know, it was the first shot, like, uh, like it was the first shot that landed, like it landed square in the temple with bare knuckles to kind of sink in a little bit deeper. If you get hit 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 in the temple, and it just you know, kind of had me rock. But like you know, like I've been through fights like that before, like you know, when me and Scoggins uh, fought, like you know, after he dropped me, like I don't I don't remember too much of the. Of the rounds after that, freaking like, and those were some of my best rounds. Like, so I think you know, if you like, it was it was kind of a weird stoppage anyway. Yeah. Like you know, if if you would have, if you wouldn't have restarted it, like I I, I still would have been fine with the uh, with the stoppage because like you know I wasn't like completely you know I'd started like pawing at him, like I wouldn't have, but like then when he restarted it, freaking and then like jumped in the in the middle, it was kind of like a weird stoppage. Uh, so like you know, I think that kind of because once I was back into kill mode, you now. Um, but you know, it just goes to show like the level that I train at, where like I don't even have to be, I don't even have to be awake. My body's gonna do the right things. Because that one one two switch step one one two that I threw on him, that was still that was still. That was still nice and clean. <laughs> now, have you kind of already game plan of what you might would do differently if you have to fight him again? Yeah, like you know, like like any fighter like is going to go over that fight men mentally in their head a thousand times. Um, you know, I know I got a little bit over aggressive. You know, like like early on in the fight, like I I, I threw two big shots that uh, didn't land cleanly, but they knocked him back against the ropes. Yeah, I could tell he wasn't like he, he didn't, didn't like the uh, power, and then like, yeah, I saw like I, I was like after like the second time, I kind of like looked at him, I was like, all right, I got you, like, and then like got over aggressive, uh, like I threw a big shot, missed, and he like you know, and his landed, um, like generally, generally I don't try to force it that much. I think you know, just uh, just got kind of swept up in the moment, wanted, wanted to really put a put him down quickly and yeah i just got a little over aggressive you know it's it's you know it's, it, it can be difficult like you know keeping your kill under control 
Uh, you know, like, you know, same thing happened in the Scoggins fight. Like, you know, I dropped him, then I got a little over aggressive, then I got dropped myself. But when, like, you know, when, when I was, when I fought like Reggie, first time I dropped him, he just, I just kind of backed off. I was like, all right, you got there. You can get back there. Don't get over aggressive and get, and get, and, you know, and eat the big shot freaking. So like, you know, I should have just kind of, you know, kind of played it out. Like, you know, and like, that was also part of the game plan that, you know, I just got a little, uh, yeah, you know, a little amped up. Like, you know, part of the game plan was try to take him uh take him into the deep waters that he hasn't been in yet. Like, you know, he's still hasn't you know, he's still hasn't been out of the first round. He hasn't really been in a Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. been in a war yet. Like and honestly I don't I don't think he'll he would really would he, 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 I don't think he's really built for that that type of uh, fighting. Like, you know, he's he's quick, explosive, powerful. What do you think it's going to take to get another title shot? I mean, are we looking at, like, you fighting maybe Justin Ibarola or Chris Garcia? Um, yeah, I, in, in my mind, I'm I'm probably one fight away. One yeah. fight away? Okay. I, I think, you know, like, yeah, I, like, you know, I don't mind, uh, you know, I don't so, mind earn, earning my spot back. Um, yeah. So maybe, like, the, the loser of this match, maybe? Like? Ryan, like if Ryan Reber lost this match, maybe you and Ryan Reber or something. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not the matchmaker. That, like, you know, they can put me up against. Yeah, that's Nate. Line. Yeah, that's Nate's job, right? Yeah, that's that's Nate's. Like, you know, he just gotta, he just gotta put the hit on, hit on, uh, hit on the guy, and the under, the underpaid assassin's gonna show up. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yeah, you know, I've never been a big call out guy anyway. But yeah, I was just about to ask you that. Do you call people out at all? Uh... No, like, like I, I've always been, I, I, like, I always, you know, try to be cool and respect, respectful. Actually, like, you know, the uh, Wayans with um, uh, Bloss was the first time I ever had to push a guy freaking <laughs> at uh, at Wayans. Like, you know, it's usually not my style. Usually not. Well, what what not do you say to you? Uh, you know, he's just getting, uh, getting in my face, trying to grab at my belt. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like. Uh... Yeah, you know, like that, he that tried to grab a little too soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you know, it was still it was still mine at that still point. Still yours. Yeah, yeah. You got like, you got to earn it. Still, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. Like you know, I, I I don't care. Like you know, I expect everybody to do whatever they need to do to be at their best. Like I want, because I want I want your best. Like I I didn't get in the like I didn't get into this game for for easy fights, like. I, I like I did this to challenge. Like I do this to challenge myself. I do this for the love of the game. I do this because I'm a because I'm a bad crazy <laughs> crazy mother. <laughs> so like, who do you think is gonna win between Reber and Blas? Um, you know, it's 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 tough. Like you know, here, here's the thing. Like Reber's du- durable. Like you know, I love Reber to death. Like you know, he's, he's I do he's, too. He's good. He's a good friend of mine. You know, I definitely like. My heart definitely wants him to win. Reckon, Mine too. Um, yeah, but you know, realistically, it, it's a it's a tough fight, especially you know, um, especially you know, Blas, Blas has, definitely has the uh, has a power advantage. Yeah, you know, Reaver's been hurt uh, hurt early in fights before. You know, so yeah, he, I think he's got to be Perez real, fight. Real I mean, Perez fight. He barely made it through that. Yep. Yeah, like you know, that, that's one one of the things. That, that, that was a great fight. That was a really great fight. Yeah, like you know, like yeah, you know, he's another one of those dudes where like you know, if he's in the fight, he's in the fight. But uh, so are people underestimating Blas a little bit? Um, I don't think I like I don't think uh, too many people, like especially like in the fight community, are, are underestimating him. Okay, they just don't. Well, like one, like I think, just not a lot of people know him that much because you know, kind of came out of came out of nowhere. Like you know, yeah. had, had um had had any of the big marquee fights at the time. Yep. Like uh, yeah, like you know, I was first like real like hard big name opponent that he that he's had. Um, like you know, so he just kind of like you know, and he's he's fought pretty quick, pretty quickly. You know, kind of like you know, kind of took the same route that I took. You know, I I fought four times in a year, like, but I I, I had some, I had some big guys on on that opponent and some uh, on um, on that come up and you know I had some uh, big fights. 
is the like the initial move to try to get it over quick though in these fights i mean because i've heard the way they explain it is boxing starts out um slow and gets fast and bkfc starts out fast and gets slow um in a lot of cases yes like uh like you know it, it just seems like especially with the way that the uh the fights are structured mm-hmm. um yeah you definitely want to establish yourself early um like you can't you can't have the feeling out process that you do in boxing because the rounds are shorter um, yeah. also you know cuts are always an issue you know uh early yeah. on you start getting cut up like you know like because it doesn't take much to cut you with bare knuckles like you know like you sit there and play feeling out feeling out and then you like you know you eat a, a jab and it's it's not it doesn't even have to be a clean jab you know catches one or two of those little knuckles you know it'll cut it'll cut you quick and now, now you're now you're in danger of getting the fight stopped. So a lot of guys choose to, uh, plus like a lot of guys just choose to get, like start quicker. Plus uh, there's always that um, like, that's kind of like a pain pit bull freaking response, you know, because everything in bare knuckle hurts, hurts to get hit, hurts to hit them. Once that pain starts like, you know, hitting you, like a lot of guys just have the, have the reaction to where they, they just start brawling and start like, you know, trying to uh trying to get it over quickly like you know um yeah I've, I've i think i've always like aggressively hunted but not like uh uh like i try to use technique and tactics uh you know to put put guys down now um you were at sturgis with uh taylor killer b starlin what do you think felt like she could have did differently in that match um, yeah, there were a couple of things that we, you know, we had talked about in camp and stuff like that. Like, here's the thing, like, yeah, you know, it's one, it's a crazy sport, crazy, crazy event, crazy fight. Like, you know, um, yeah. So like the exact like thing, like, you know, the plan for was for initially for her to start out slow uh-huh. and feel things out. Um, yeah. <laughs> but as soon as, as soon as that first exchange happened, she, she, it immediately became a, like, she, you know, she immediately went to war. Yeah. Um, like, you know, that was like, you know, that was, that was one of the rounds that she, uh, that, that was a round that like, you know, Britain definitely won that first round. Like, you know, she even came back to the corner and she goes, well, that didn't work out well. I was like, yeah. I was like, no, no, I was just like, no shit. You, you want to calm down and like, and start, start using your, like, and start, start out boxing this shit. Um, like, and like, you know, that, I think uh, that was probably the round that, that you know, would have made a difference. Um, but she fought an amazing fight. Like, you know, I have no complaints. Like, you know, she fought her heart out. Like, you know, fought for a world title and just came up slightly short. Like, you know, I, like, I, I kind of thought, I thought, I thought we had done it. But like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta beat the champ. And it's there were, there were, there were two rounds where I know she definitely won, and then there were. One that I know Britain definitely won, and then there were two like two that were just razor thin, like you know, it's, yeah, yeah, you know, and that's the that's just you know the the fight game, like you know, if, especially when you leave it in the judges judges hands, you know, um, but you know, even even as a coach, like you know, I, I don't have I don't have too much, you know, I, to where I can be critical, like you know, like the biggest thing was like that first round, like. Yeah, but sometimes like sometimes fighters just need to get it out of their system. Like, you know, especially in those big moments. Like as soon as uh, you know, as soon as that first contact's made, all of a sudden, like you know, you just go to war. But once you started uh, you know, once you started relaxing, using her tank technique, establishing herself, you know, she, you know, she fought great and uh, like you know, those 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 women put on a hell of a performance. Yeah, their fights tend to be usually more entertaining than some of the men's because they go to distance every time yeah. pretty much you know like that last one they had um in kansas city that charlene um i think her name's helena or something like i think she's gonna be a problem for some women in bkfc she i think she's gonna make it to where she probably ends up fighting christine ferreira for the belt it's gonna be a journey but i like she looked pretty ferocious out there for a woman oh yeah like you know did you you see that one 
Uh, I did not. I did not catch that one. Um, I saw like a couple of little like highlights and stuff like that, but I didn't really got. Uh, I didn't really catch that one. Like, yeah, she was pretty ferocious with it. How many more years do you think you got in the sport? You know, like my my big 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 thing is the moment I start thinking about retirement, I need to retire. Okay. Like, uh, so I, I I tend to not really address that. Uh, questions like, you know, hell, this is the first loss I've taken in seven years, I think. Yeah. You know, um, so I don't think, uh, you know, I, you know, in, in this sport, in the, in the, this sport, you know, you're, there's going to be some L's, there's going to be some trips. Like, so I don't think, uh, I don't think this is a sign of sign, you know, that the end is here. Like, you know, I've, uh, yeah, I just won. Yeah, you know, it wasn't too long ago that I won that world title, and it's uh, not too long, not too long from now. I'm gonna win it back. Uh, like you know, I'll. I think I think I, I think I'll know when the time is right. But yeah, you know, I'm not gonna put a, uh, I'm not gonna put a time stamp on it. Like you know, um, yeah, you know, I've already uh, proved most doubters wrong, and of like, you know, what you're capable of. Uh, like, you know, and the, the big reason is because I don't stop training. I don't do anything else. I don't have a lot of hobbies. Like, you know, I own my gym and like my, my job is my passion. So I, I, you know, I stay in the gym. Like, That's you know, always after, good. After that fight, I was in back in the gym the next day. You know, I haven't really taken a break since that fight. Like, you know, since that fight, you know, I let my head rest up a little bit. Like, you know, let, let my brain heal, uh, but you know, I don't stop. Like you know, at my age, I will never get like you know. If I if I stop for some reason, I will never get back to where I was. I am not like at the age I am. Like you know, I know that. But if I don't stop, and that's one the reason why. I, like you know, I've you know, I've still been so good uh, this late my this late my career. How do you balance training other fighters and training yourself? Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a rough tightrope. Uh, like, you know, like, I, I don't know too many coaches. I don't know too many, like, you know, world-class f- fighters that also are a head coach and a gym owner. Um, like it's, 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 it's a tough act to, uh, you know, to keep, uh, but like, you know, the big thing is like, I just, um, I just train extra, like, you know, like I'm doing all the same thing that, that, that like all my fighters are doing, like but like more and harder, um, you know like so like it's just it's just one of those things where I just I just put in the extra work. I got a couple more questions and then we're gonna let you uh, get some shout outs. Um, I'm a dog lover, so what kind of dog you got over there? Uh, he's a mud. I got, uh, my, 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 uh, my parents actually, well, my, uh, mom runs an animal rescue, uh, Richardson okay. rescue. So like, um, I've had him since he was about like eight weeks old. Uh, but he's part Dotson, part whatever. <laughs> Sounds like my dog. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's a, uh, he's a jealous little guy. Like as soon as I, as soon as I started getting on, getting on the podcast, he had to, he had to get some attention. Sound like my dog too. Now, <laughs> when are we? Can we expect probably your next fight? Um, heck, if they give, if they give me the word, it could be tomorrow. Like you know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Like that's the thing. Like the only the only thing I need time for is the weight cut. Okay. Like you know, like a lot of times my um when I'm in fight camp, I kind of I'll train less but more intense. Like. So like it doesn't like I'm I'm one of those, one of those guys like I don't need a a lot of times longer camps wind up uh wind up draining me more just because I wind up killing myself for for too damn too damn long. So uh, like I don't like I don't mind short camps. I don't mind uh you know a little short notice. Yeah, I always hear that's an issue with a lot of fighters is them trying to get their weight down to a certain weight sometimes and then they get so exhausted by the time they get to the match. Is that ever been a thing for you? 
Um, you know, I, I've got my weight cut down to to a science at, at okay. this point. I, I especially because, like I said, like I don't take time off. I don't like balloon up. Um, like it's just like to do it properly. I've got to like because I walk around pretty lean and like you know, um, like yeah. So my cut, my uh, like my cut is difficult, but uh, like you know, as but I like. I've got it down to a science now. It's just like, you know, ha- having the, having enough time to time it right to where something like that doesn't happen is the big issue. Well, we hit that 30 minute mark. I know you got a busy schedule, man. Like you said, you train it every day of your life and that's what's up, man. I mean, a lot more people need to put more discipline and that dedication in their lives. And I think it will go further before we go. Anything you want to shout out? Um, yeah, just all my people at my gym, Modern Warrior MMA, you know, right in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Like, you know, we've got, I've got, you know, uh, some phenomenal fighters there. Great atmosphere. Like, you know, um, you know, there's a reason why we've been so much, so much successful. And it's just, uh, you know, the one team, one family, uh, motto is not really a motto. It's just kind of how we, how we live, how we operate. Um, you know, so just everybody at the gym, like, you know, they're, they're family. Well, I appreciate you taking your time out, man. It's a truly an honor, man. You're a friend of the show now. So anytime you ever want to come back on, please do. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to start clipping up some clips and make sure I promote them heavy, man. And I'm can't wait to see your next fight, man. All right. Well, I appreciate it. I'll, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be back on anytime. All right, man. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, man. All right. You too. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there you go. Keith, the rock star Richardson, um, recently lost the belt, but like he said, he wants to get that belt back. He's hoping uh one fight. And I'm thinking it shouldn't be too many fights either, man. BKC don't need to play uh politics with this one. Maybe the uh the loser of this Blas and Reber match, maybe um Iberola, Garcia. I don't know, man, but Definitely uh, check it, check him out for his next fight. I'm going to be tuned in. Can't wait. Appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode of the Paul Pickett Podcast. And I'm out. Peace. See you later.